Right, welcome back everybody. Another video on the TZR and in today's video we're going to be stripping the engine down. I know in a previous video I said I weren't going to do it because the chap said it had a rebuild. Thinking about it, that was 18 years ago. I thought we're going to split the cases. Sop is here. No doubt he's going to say a word. Yeah, you've got me in because you don't want to strip it down. You want me to do it. I've never stripped an engine down before so you're me. How do you know I have? Well, you told me you have. I've done loads of things. So you're my teacher today. Let's get started. Get the kettle on. So what are you doing there then? Well, we're withdrawing the uh, the magneto. As you can see, once you've got all the gear, it makes life a lot easier. And that means a little flywheel pulley. This one's a universal one, which has got uh, two ends on it. You've got the larger end, which is a again left-handed thread and you also can spin that you can take that bolt out and then you can spin it round and use it probably on a little fizzy or something like that or a 125 maybe i don't know what that one's for but uh, there you go this is a 125 oh, of course it's on a fizzy then so that's the uh, magneto off so looking in there there's our stator which has got to come off with them three screws we've got jis screwdrivers for that well that's what we want Blue handles, that's it. Just the kiddies, right? You just uh, you sit there and do nothing. I'm taking my jacket off. And we just crack them JIS screws. As this has been apart before, we can uh, tell that because it's uh, one of the nuts on the other side is rounded off. Can you just hold that while, I, or you undo that, yeah? One above. That's it. Them out. Let's have a look. Right, we might need to pull that rubber out of there. And I'm not sure if or not we've got to take the trigger off separately, I'm not sure yet. So, uh, oh no, there we go. So that should lift forward. Get that one out for the wiring loop. There we go. And we've also got the little uh, neutral switch there as well. Another JOS screw on that's only a little half a turn on that one, probably. And it's a little slotted. Uh, plug on there which should pull out and that hopefully should uh, all lift out together there we go the bloke did say that this had new crank seals in it um, I'm not really sure to be honest with you but uh, you're going to replace these anyway aren't you because we're going to split the crank so you might uh, you might as well get them done yeah right so we'll take off the sprocket or two little bolts there we'll pull out the clutch shaft out of there and then we'll spin the engine over and we'll uh, remove the um, the clutch basket and they've all the kickstart levers and stuff on that side so we're just going to get reset up again and then we'll we'll tackle that in that little hole there look yeah okay that's when it goes back in that comes out got a little fresh washer on the front of that make sure that goes back on that connects up to the worm gear there just remove this uh Not that this is a rev counter drive, drive, isn't it? Yeah. Not the speedo. The speedo's on the front wheel, isn't it? <coughs> that comes out of there. There we go. So that's the rev counter drive. 
so that's right we're getting down to bare bones now now as I said in there there might be a ball bearing I'm not sure I can't remember yeah but that's been the uh, well mullered before as you can see there that um, crankshaft bolt or nut rather so it might be worth getting another one of them gear selector shaft should pull straight through from the other side of the engine if I remember right coming through it's going to go straight through so there I think you'll find there we go see so that should come straight through just drift that through there we go right that's your uh, gear selector ch uh, rod right so Yeah, there's a washer wipe if you care, so there's a brush washer on there, look. Pull the gear off. Anything at the back of it? Should be another brush washer. Yep. So if that was me, I'd put that in a little bag now, but uh, you ain't got a little bag, have you? I ain't got a little bag, on. Right, put that there with the money, innit? Just don't forget this washer's on the back of them. Right, so, in a way, it's good that um, we have stripped it down, because there's a little bit of uh, grit in there. Yeah, I can see. So you can't rely on other people's rebuilds and all that, you know? Right, okay, so we've got to, uh, that bearing, these two nuts have got to come undone now. The tab washer's already bent open on that one, look, although the bottom one is, I don't know, I can't make that out. So you're going to need new tab washers. Yeah, it's been true, that's not it? Yeah. And they're not all that tight as well. I don't suspect that they've been torqued down properly. They're sort of hand tight. So that one comes off of there. Again, that's got a little locating pin in there. That's going to do the main crank. Now, this again should be a bit tighter, which is a 19 mil. That wasn't tight either, was it? First, goes in there like that. Then we've got these uh, retaining Phillips screws to take off. So now, we've got a Woodruff key in there. And that cog should pull forward. Woodruff key. And there we go. There. There's your crank shell. Retaining big Phillips JOS there. So it's just a good piece now, isn't it? There we go. Comes off with any thrust washers on there? Nope. That's a rubber mounted gear, that is, look. Yeah. Right, so you know where that comes in. There's also a little wood rough key in there as well. There we go. That goes with that one. That goes with that one. Right, so we've got the selector rod down there. Oh, so there we go. Go through there. There we go. And that should hopefully pull out. Right, so there's 14 bolts that uh, hold the two crankcases together. I'm not sure whether they're all different lengths at the moment, but we'll find out as soon as we uh, take them out. 
yeah they are different lengths look so you can probably only drop them in a certain way Push rod. Did you put that push rod back in? Did you put that in? No. No. So that's the push rod that comes out of there. I've got the bearing in there. Yeah, you got the ball bearing. There we go. So that goes in there. Right, okay. Hopefully, if we start doing a little few taps. See there, look, we've just got a little gap there on the crankshaft now. Just starting to open. There we go. Let's get them bits of wood out of the way, say that. We turn it back that way. Like that. Hopefully lift this off. Looks like the crank's coming out with the top half. And the gearbox stays in with the bottom half. So there we are. So all we have to do now, literally, is just lift out the um, the gears and the selector. There's the bearings there. And we'll take the crank out, and then you can go and get them vapour blasted the cases, because they didn't want to power the... they didn't want to vapour blast them, did they? Not with the internals in. No. Right, OK, there you go. Right, so we've got the cases stripped down now so they can get ready to be sent off to get vapour blasted. We've got the bearings here and all the other internals, the crank, the clutch. What do you reckon? Well, I think I deserve a drink, a cup of tea or something. I've done you a cold drink here. So while we're in here, I thought why, what we can do is we can quickly rebuild this um, brake master cylinder up because I've got the rebuild kit for it so once we get that on we can maybe get that on the handlebars in the next video with some of the other switches so let's head over to there and get started okay so we've got the Haynes manual here but the Haynes manual doesn't show you a breakdown of the way the seals go and it's only a sort of a line drawing pin picture rather than a photograph so lucky enough we've got the old master cylinder internals and that means that we can actually see what size, what way the two little seals go on. It's very easy to put them back to the front, I would have thought. So we've got some old uh, new brake fluid there as a lubrication. Is it old or new? It's new. So we know that that one goes on the front. I don't know why I'm doing this, because it's your bloody bike. It's a learning day for me today. Is it? Yeah. Come on, baby. There we go. Well, that's the first one on. It's on the right way. The second one. There we go. Look, as soon as I take the gloves off, it's on. Right, so that's the two rubber seals on the shaft. As you can see, that's what we're left with there. So all we've got now is that little spring on the end. It just sits on there like that. There's our drawing, so we spin that around. Just lift the rubber bung in there from the powder coating, look. It's like rubbish getting in there. There we go. I take it you've cleaned all that out in there, have you? It was cleaned out. Right, well, let's just have a drop of lube in there. Help the seals to float. 
So apparently the spring goes in first. Like that. There we go. That's nice. And now what we've got to do is to push that, get that circlip in, and then push the rubber boot over the top of it, don't we? There we go. That went in nice and easy, didn't it? See, I'm using my Versa tray. Hey. Well, my, you're, you're using it. My Versa tray. And then that should sit in there. I think there's two um, grooves in there, isn't there? If I remember rightly. That sits in a little groove. Around the top. That's it, isn't it? Yep, just a spectrum glass to go on. There we go. So that's the caliper piston back in, like that, and then the inspection glass, you should have an o-ring in there, make sure the seating is clean, and then this should be literally just a push fit, in there, so we've got a new cap on. Down too hard. Right, then, so we'll leave it here for this little video. I'll keep my eye on him because he's pulling faces. Cheers. That's how to strip down a TZR125 engine and how to rebuild a master cylinder. If you haven't already, check out my other playlist and go over and uh, have a look at Retro Restore. Give him a sub, he needs some people on there. Unbelievable. Put the kettle on. Until next time, we'll see you about. Unbelievable.